two, one, showtime. Hello, welcome to this week's hashtag toe to toe. Delighted to say this week we're joined by Barry Jones and the Benoit Bomber. Joe Laws is in the studio. Yep. Good to see you, Joe. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. How have you been? I mean, we're going to see you out in April the 4th. That's yeah. the Ritson uh, Vasquez undercard. We don't know who you're fighting yet, mm. but the plan is you're going down in weight slowly. Yeah, slowly. My next fight at 142. And then we fight April, I'm going to 140 and just keep and just keep moving down until 135. How do you find the making weight, how, how's that going, the diet inside of things? That's the only side where I'm not enjoying <laughs> uh, Like, I've never, I, I've never really died to an extent, like in the amateurs, as a pro, but I think a good big kid always beats a good small kid. So I, I've just had to bite the bullet and start dieting. Never easy, is it, Barry? No, no, it's not no fun. I just, <laughs> and all boxers say that's the worst part of yeah. the job. It, it's, it's weird, but getting punched in the face, it's easy, isn't it? Yeah, it's <laughs> relatively easy, yeah. It happens or it doesn't happen. Why why did you turn over as a welterweight then, if, if you always thought you could make...? Because in the, in the amateurs, I boxed at 69 kilo, and I had great success. I had a uh, treasury GB at 69. Uh, I fought for England three times. I won the English title. I got the fines of the ABAs, and I was all at 69. But I just never, ever, ever, like, died. <laughs> Have you tried getting down... If you had like a trial of losing the weight, or not, not in the amateurs, but like I'm spawned now in there. I done eight threes last week, so my performance in the gym is still there. Yeah. So. Cause, that, cause that's the worry about losing yeah, weight. Yeah. It's not. It's, it's the sharpness and the energy. Mm. That if you know, especially for someone like with you, full of energy. Like, yeah. You know, if you lose well, that. Just, just touch on the full of energy thing before we get stuck <laughs> into the questions. You've kind of blasted onto our scenes, really, mm. haven't you? Onto our stages. I mean, you've got. Like you brought with you. <laughs> we see you wearing this as part of your ring walk. Yeah. You wear some crazy stuff when you when you're weighing in. You create sunglasses. Sunglasses, yeah. <laughs> um, wh where's it all come from? What what's that? Right, me the Mexican hat came from. I was 14 or 15, and I was in the junior novices, and I went to Mexico with my dad, and I seen this Mexican hat, and me, only great fighters years ago, no, who I, who I looked up to, was like Ricardo Mayorga. Barrera, Morales, it was all these tough Mexicans and like, like that style. And I seen this Mexican hat in Mexico when I was like 14, 15. I says, I says to me, Dad, I'm going to buy that hat and I'm going to wear that for the finals. And I made the finals, I wore it and I won it. And I've uh, still got the video now, me walking when I was 15, mm. proper skinny, with a Mexican hat. My dad behind us, clapping his hands. And, uh, and uh, I came back and I was and it was before me, before me, me pro fight, and I was in Mexico again, and I seen this Mexican hat. I said, you know what? I'm gonna buy that Mexican hat, and I'm gonna wear it for the uh, for me ring walk. I done it. I won and all that, and I got my first big Sky show and my third fight. And uh, I says, I remember that. And I says, well, I'm gonna get the um, get the the hat, and we will go the full hog and buy the mask as well. So this is this is this is the original mask. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> the original man. <laughs> it's great. It's absolutely brilliant. You've got a great story though. I mean, mm. you came into the world. Well, it's about making weight. I mean, you were <laughs> tiny when you were born. Yeah, I was a I was a twin as well, but me me twin couldn't hack it. <laughs> Fourteen weeks premature. Is that yeah, right? Yeah, uh, over three months. I was one pound so many ounces. In the That's me, not even a boxing glove, is it? Is it? In the series, uh, I could fit in my dad's hand from there to there. I, I was transparent. I was living in, living in the incubator for like for months. The says uh, I may not um, may not make it. I'll have growing problems. The, this problem and all that, but uh, pr I just proved more wrong, didn't I? Always been a fighter, eh? Aye. I believe it's a similar story. It's Tyson Fury has a similar yeah, story, yeah. doesn't he? As well, so it bodes well. Yeah, it, definitely. It um, right, let's get stuck into these. You've actually answered answered Chris's question because he wants to know what the story was behind yeah. the uh, sombrero and cigar. Um, Devon Haney is a name that keeps cropping up with That's your name, name yeah. WBC champion, yeah. Um, Jack wants to know, how do you beat Devin Haney? I mean, is that something that is on your radar? Yeah, but how to beat the, like, I'm, I get loads of tweets and loads, and loads of people saying, is, you call out Devin Haney, but yeah, I'm for him, yeah, I'm for him. I'm not saying I would beat the British champion, I'm not, I'm not saying I would beat the, the European champion, but I'm saying I would beat Devin Haney. Like, styles make fights, and my style, I, I, I know what he's got. I've, I've, just, I've just got a beat of him. His style, if you, if you show him any respect, some, any form of respect, if, if you give him distance, he will look 
a million dollars. You sparred him, didn't you, before? Yeah, yeah. So How I, did that go? The first two rounds, couldn't hit him. The, fourth, uh, the third round, I come with a big left hook and his legs doing a funny little dance. In the fourth round, I absolutely just knocked him. And I was meant to do six rounds of him. And after the fourth round, me was that pulled him out. And, and, and that's not me lying. That's not me making a story up. That's just how it went. A little birdie tells me as well that you uh, might have been hungover at the time. I was badly hungover. <laughs> I, was, I was badly hungover. I was in Las Vegas in the biggest nightclub event was on that uh, it's, it's Caesar's Palace. So me, and, so me and Jordan Reynolds went and I woke up at half four. I uh, mean, I woke up at half four. I, I went to bed at half four in the morning and I woke up, my eyes were crusty, my head was banging. I looked at Jordan, I went, yeah, Jordan, there's no way uh, I'm going, yeah. He went, bruv, we went to Las Vegas. I went, fair dues, fair dues. So I, um, I went downstairs, got two coffees down there, went to the gym and spotted Devin Haney. That's one way to get rid of a hangover, <laughs> isn't it? Is that, is that the sole focus for getting down to lightweight then? Just coffee. Just for him. You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean is, is Haney the, your sole focus for that? Or? Yeah, it, yeah, it is as well. But also, like, a good big kid always beats a good small kid. And uh, I think it's going to come a point this year and next year where I do sort of find better and better kids. And they're and, just too big for you physically. Yeah, just yeah. physically too big for us. But uh, I try to give it a go. I know I can do it. So if I can carry the power, if I can carry the power down to 140, 135. See, would, you, would you like to see that, Barry? Well, I, th I, th I think if you can make it safely. My, my only issue is not so much the power, it's the energy. Yep, energy. Th that, that's the biggest thing. If, that, you, if you can carry the energy yeah, levels that, down. Yeah. That's why I don't want to just jump straight into 135. Yeah, yeah. I want to go 142, sensible, yeah. 140, 137, up the round. And if you see you can't make it, you'll stay wherever you yeah. can. But what about if Devin Haney doesn't move up the super lightweight then? If, if he moves up. <laughs> what if he doesn't? And you can't make the weight. Oh, I'll make it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll make it somehow. <laughs> this determination, though, is, it's going to happen. <laughs> Um, another name that uh, is, has been mentioned, Steve wants to know, how would a fight go between you and Conor Ben? Conor Ben, you know what? Um, since I've moved down on weight, I've uh, spoke to Conor Ben on his live video and we made friends, sort of. But uh, me and Conor Ben would be a, would be a war. It'd be a, I think there'd be fireworks, wouldn't there? Oh, it'd be fireworks. Well, you've made friends now, have you? No, well, I've made... Not I'm friends. Not friends. One side Boxing friends! friends. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think, uh, to be fair with Conor Ben, he's, he's one of the most improved fighters in the, mm. in the last sort of 18 months. You think, because when he turned pro, I think, he was, it's horrible to say it, but I think he was dying out on his dad's name. Yeah, he yeah. was really aggressive, but I think he's improved. He's, you know, he's, he's really gone, he's studied the game. And, and he's had he's, to do it really under the spotlight as well because of the again, name. Again, you know, he, gets, he gets the benefits of having the Ben name, but also the pressures yeah. that go with that. Mm. Everyone, everyone's looking for you to make a mistake. I think you know, he was getting criticised because he was making, taking big leaps and looking a little bit, you know, not, not the full article, but I think he's really worked on his game and he looks a massively improved fighter for me. So are there any other names on your radar? You've got like I mean, three weights to pick from. Three weights to pick from, though. Well, three weights to pick from, loads of fighters. Uh, now, Josh Kelly? Josh Kelly, um, Run up your way? I am, um, I, I fought him as an amateur, uh, but one for, uh, for titles, 147 is just not my weight. What about Lewis Ritson? That'd be, that'd be a crack off, eh, wouldn't it? That'd be a crack off. Nice. If you can, if you can, you know, because you're still, mm. no, you're still there as you're creating, yeah, you? yeah, you're yeah. already yeah. fighting for titles. If you can get there, then. Yeah. A northeast. That big arm. Bonanza, but pretty good, wouldn't it? That big arm teed concussion. <laughs> Under the next. And where day. would you put it? Because you're both, you like you're both massive. Who would you like to see him? Lewis Ritson? Well, nobody. None of that. To be fair, none of them right now. I think you're, you're, for me, still, where, you're, where you're at your career. Still right, learning. Still yeah, I think you're still learning. I think, yeah, I think now you just you need to fight guys who, who have winning records, but yep. have lost a few and, and just keep learning your trade. Because yep, I've, I've, seen, I've seen a few of your fights, like not off Sky as well. Yeah, and yeah. I think as good as you are, there's still some flaws. Oh, you want... definitely. Well, well you've would... seen what I've said yeah, about you. Yeah, that? well, I would, like, I'm serious. My dad, like, my last fight, like, from, like, the first MDK show to the second one, yeah. I improved, like, I improved yeah. massively. So uh, if I can still improve on, like, that that four-month period, there's no reason why I can't keep improving the next two, three, yeah? For you, it's, like, having that energy is fantastic. And yeah. I think, and, and it was something, and you can't really have, you either have or you don't. Yeah. yeah. But it's... Using it, yeah. You you have to keep you have, you have to keep the, the lid on the bottle for it for most yeah, of the time. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, be very efficient yeah. with it. And knowing when to burst and when not yeah, to burst. Yeah, definitely. Because sometimes your your feet will be too fast for your body. Yeah, and you yeah, get too yeah, close yeah. To the target. It's hard getting too yeah. excited. I, but I think the next fight, you're going to see that. I've been working the gym and I, I am. What going have to you been working on? Can we ask? Um, that's for me to know and to, for everybody to find out. <laughs> I'm always going to try and ask that question, but I never get the answer. So if you want to find out. Come by ticket office. <laughs> 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 uh, 
Um, what, what's the dream? James wants to know, um, what's the big dream for your boxing career? Is it to headline St James's Park? The, the, that, the, the dream idea. for every boxer is always the British title, fight Las Vegas and all that. And them all dreams on my bucket list, but the fight St James is in my back garden with 50 or 5,000 uh, people sh shouting your name, walking out, that'll be... Uh, do you dream about that? Oh, I do. I like ju <laughs> just talking about now. I'm like, I'm getting goosebumps. You know what I mean? And uh, me, me, me walking out, hearing me song, just, just looking at, it'll be, I can't even speak now. It'll be amazing. That's the dream, like. To be fair, if you couldn't know, because your crowd are crazy anyway, and <laughs> no. they are, and they're You've fantastic. You've got so many supporters. Yeah, it's, you're it's, a big ticket seller. It's yeah, it's amazing. Like, uh, and where I'm from isn't like a well-off place, so when people buy a ticket off, it's, it's not just a £40 ticket, it's a £40 ticket, it's the next day they're off work. Did they buy it off you? Off me personally. No, that's that's the important me part. Me personally. Because Josh Warrington, massive ticket seller, personal. Yeah. And, and you tell the kids, no, even just off the internet and stuff, yeah, and yeah. Facebook and Twitter and all the rest of it, and it's a very important tool, mm. but that personal interaction, mm. you're doing that. Yeah, well, on the weekends, I'm free, but every weekend I've been putting eight hour shifts and nine hour shifts and dropping tickets off, that's all I do. I've, I've got my phone there, me sat nav, I've got this house, that house, up there, up there, <laughs> dropping tickets off, meeting people and Get all that. Step counting as well. <laughs> and it's just, uh, it's hard work, but I, I think uh, if they're more willing to buy the ticket purchase off me, it's, yeah. the, it's the least I can do to come in, have the crap of them. And of course, the bigger you get, no, if you do keep going up, then mm. those are the things you can't do. Yeah, the yeah. fact that you've done it from day one, that, that, yeah, that, yeah. that builds that base. Because mm, then, no, it, it has a massive, it, no, it's like a snowball effect. Aye, uh, definitely. Ricky Hatton, no, definitely. one of the most popular fighters, yeah, the but, last working class yeah. hero in boxing mm. for me. And well, he, I loved him, Ricky Hatton, growing up, but like, he was down to earth just the way he handled himself, like, outside the ring when he fought in Vegas and yeah. against Mayweather, and he brought 5,000 uh, people from Manchester. And, uh, well, I mean, but, but he's selling to his friends. Then his friends turn into stadiums. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And, and that's how it happens. Yeah, it's it's great to do. We have to talk about before you go. I know you're hot footing after Vegas, aren't you, tomorrow? Oh yeah, oh, it's, it's, it's a hard right life, here. What can it? I tell you? You know, it's uh, come. <laughs> bring me out here, bring me. <laughs> I would take you, but you'd be hungover. Oh. And, and as your yeah, story's you've got to focus on a fight in a, in a few that's, weeks. That's yeah. where I perform it me best, hungover. <laughs> I'm, I'm going, I'm going Here's, there. Of course, Wild of Fury 2, you're going for. <laughs> yes, you're not I just am, going yeah. for a jolly holiday. You are going, no, I'm going for. I'm going to work, if yeah, you can yeah, call yeah. it work. And it's a, it's a, it's a really, it's a, it, you know, it's, a good, it's an intriguing fight and a good fight where you, it's hard to pick a winner. And you can't argue with the with the, the people are swaying and you can't they're, they're picking one then they change their mind it is one of those fights isn't it and you it's can really ball. argue you can see the logic behind both sometimes yeah. people are make silly predictions on their personal feeling but this is quite an easy thing while while the knocks him out from round one to twelve or fury stands him on his head with his boxing ability or fury stands him on his head with the boxing ability then gets knocked in the twelfth round it almost happened the last time so it has that sort of fight. What do you think? What adjustments do you think Fury's going to have made in the last one? Well, see, I, I think he's, I think he wants to be more aggressive. I th I, and I, I don't think he's going to be ag aggressive. But I think he's going to want more purges on his punches, to, just to make Wilder think. But I think he doesn't have to make too many adjustments, in my opinion. I think it's Wilder who has to make the more adjustments, has bigger scope for improvement because he followed Fury round, mm. and he, and he got to not be hypnotised by Fury and commit himself. If he says Fury can not punch, as he's been saying now. Then when Fury does that double feint, which worked so well mm. for him in the first fight, he just got to walk through him, which is easier said than done. But I think if he doesn't, doesn't commit himself early mm. and Fury gets a lead and gets into a rhythm, then it, you know, he's going to need that, that KO shot, which you know, luckily he has. <laughs> just a dad. Yeah. Jay, what are you thinking, Ian? I think Tyson Fury punches a lot harder than what people think. Yeah. And I think uh, for this fight, I think he's going to shock everybody and come out and try and stop him. His new coach, his uncle was... Uh, Emmanuel Stewart, and they told all these fighters not to, uh, not not to let it go, to, uh, not to let it go to to the distance. And uh, he's pulling me up for this fight. He's been doing loads more strength training, and I think, I think if he got knocked down in the twelfth round, he got up and then pushed him back and caught him with some heavy shots. I think I think he's going to try and put a term this time, personally. But uh, I think there's only one winner, and that's Fury, Gypsy King. So intriguing, isn't it? It'd be a good fight. I think you know if if, it's, if it takes off from if it's wrong thirteen, but the way the, the last mm. round finished, then we're in for the treat. Mm.
I'm not on to find out. Um, thank you very much, guys. Joe, you're going to be on the podcast later on with yep. Barry, um, so make sure you download that on iTunes. But, uh, yeah, thank you very much. We'll see Pleasure. you next week. Sky Sports. Feel it all.